Hello everyone, Kevin Gerkley here from Tech Formality, the blog that focuses on tech guides, tech news, and tech reviews. And in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at Komodo Firewall and the proper configurations, um, in my opinion, that should be set up on the default um, installation of the product. So with that being said, let's uh, go ahead and get started here in just a second. Okay, so if you do want to go ahead over to uh, Google and type in Komodo Firewall, you will be prompted with a few different options here at the top. So you want to click on either the first one or the second link, which will take you directly to the free firewall. Uh, so I just went ahead and clicked on the first link, and this is where you get to. Uh, so world's number one firewall and antivirus for $29.99 a year. That is their premium edition. If you wanted to pay for that, you can. Uh, so we will go ahead and click on free firewall and get that download now. It automatically starts downloading uh, upon clicking that download button. So now you can close out of your web browser and then go into your downloads folder or wherever you save that uh, download to. And you just go ahead and double click on the installer and run. And Komodo Firewall does offer a sandboxing feature as well. So that is a huge benefit to the product and also that it is free. So once you go ahead and uh, get to the start screen here, you'll see that you are welcomed by Komodo. Um, you can just go ahead and click accept and install. And you'll be prompted or uh, instructed, I guess, with a few different things. So the, the containment feature that they have is actually built into uh, the firewall. Be safe, be in control, run unknown applications in a self-isolated environment. Uh, file rated, trust or, or malicious. Uh, check any file reputations in our global database. So those are two of the features that are included with this free firewall. Now, if you do go ahead and download Komodo's um, Internet Security Premium Edition, uh, which is still the free edition, um, I'm not really sure what their um, premium edition that you have to pay for is called, but the free edition of their antivirus also comes equipped with this firewall and sandboxing feature. So if you keep that in mind, um, that is also something to note whenever you do install that antivirus. Uh, so we'll go ahead and let this run really quick, and whenever it's finished, uh, we'll be right back. Okay, and on completion of the um, installation of the firewall, you are greeted with a few settings here that um, are initially uh, prompted whenever you do finish the install. So the first one is change my DNS pro provider to Komodo Secure DNS, improve security online, faster resolution of web pages. Um, if you're concerned about this or want to know what this is, you can click on this what is this button. I am going to leave it checked as I am fine with them changing the DNS service to theirs. Um, enable cloud-based behavior um, analysis of untrusted files. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave this um, checked as well. So then what that does is um, cloud-based behavior analysis. So it does, whenever there is an untrusted file, it will upload it to their database to confirm that it is not... Uh, malicious. So that is something to keep uh, checked there. Send anonymous program usage, crashes, errors, clicks, etc. Statistics to Komodo to improve product quality. I'm going to uncheck that feature. Um, I usually don't ever send anonymous um, usage. You can if you wish to. Um, that's just my personal preference. Enhance my web browsing experience by setting Yahoo to my home page, new tab, and default search engine. I'm going to uncheck that as I do not want that additional feature added as well. And then the last one here is a set, uh, set Komodo Dragon as default browser. So you'll notice not over here on the left side, there is a Komodo Dragon. Um, and this is actually Komodo's uh, web browser that they have developed. Um, if you wanted to use that, you could. I'm going to uncheck that as I do not wish to use that at this time. And you can also put in your email here for Komodo News offers and discounts to the following email address, and you would be able to receive special offers um, from Komodo directly. So we're going to go ahead and click on Finish here. And that is the um, installation that is now completed. So if you look down here at the firewall in your system tray, um, it is telling us that you need to restart your computer to uh, for some changes to take effect. So we will go ahead and click on fix it and as soon as we click on that it will restart the computer. So whenever we come back um, we will go ahead and jump right into the settings and the best configurations that I believe should be set up on this platform. So stick with me for just a minute. Okay so we are back here now after the restart and as you can see we are back um, to the Komodo firewall interface itself. Um, so on the top here you have a few different options. You have task and this task button actually takes you into general task, firewall task, containment task, and advanced task. 
Uh, so just in the general task screen or tab here, you can see that you can scan your computer for viruses and spyware, um, run the updater to check for program updates, unblock applications previously blocked by the security components. So that would be if you accidentally block something and you need it unblocked, you can go into here and unblock that application. And then you can also get live support um, from a certified Komodo technician um, that is available 24 seven. On the firewall task um, option here, you can go ahead and click uh, either allow application, block application, and those two would allow an application to connect to the internet. And if you click on it, it will actually ask you what the file is that you want to run. So that's like a one time setting if you wanted to run something only one time that is allowed or one time that is blocked. And then from the future there, you can go ahead and mark it as uh, secure or not. And you can either mark it as a blocked or allow. Uh, Stealth Ports manages PC's visibility for other PCs. If you click on this, um, it will allow you to uh, communicate with other computers in a network by stealthing them. You may configure this computer's visibility to others. So this is any computers that are on your network. You can either block incoming connections or alert incoming connections. Um, it's up to you what you click on this. I would leave it as uh, alert incoming connections. So anytime a connection is um, initiated, it will actually pop up and let you know about that. So that's, I always like to know what's going on in the background. So I would recommend using that feature. You can also block incoming connections, but then you might run into some additional issues of different things being blocked that you did not want to be blocked. Uh, manage networks, allow or block connections from other computers and detected networks so here you can actually if you had several computers on this network you can actually click on trust network or block network and you can um, block or unblock individual networks um, stop network activity block all network activity to and from this pc if you click on that it will actually block all network activity if you click on it again it will allow network connectivity so that's just a temporary pause whenever you click on that and it will disconnect you from your network uh, view connections, we can actually click on this, and here you can see your system information, UDP out, and this is my IP address, local, of course, um, bytes in, bytes out, so it's just pretty much a summary screen of what's going on. Uh, if you click on more, it's actually asking you to download Komodo Kill Switch, which is also a free program that uh, is uh, from Komodo, and it's more like a process explorer that shows everything what's going on in your computer. Uh, we're not going to get into that right now, but as you can see, as I clicked on something, uh, it does show my current connections to the outside. So it's trying to access these two ports. And I, if I had to guess, that would be because I just clicked on that um, more button. So now you can see the Komodo install down here is uh, open because I clicked on that button. So we will go ahead and get out of that and uh, go off to the containment task. So now you have in the containment task, run virtual, reset the container, view active processes so we'll start with those three the first one run virtual you can run applications in the container and create shortcuts for them on the desktop if you click on this you can actually choose and run a program um, and you can actually create a virtual desktop shortcut as well um, alternatively instead of going into run a virtual application you can actually just right click on the application on your desktop and the shortcut and click on run in Komodo container and it will run that in a virtual container as well. So that's a different way to do that if you are uh, wanting to know how to do that. Um, reset the container, clears container data by erasing all content. So this will actually clear all the applications that are currently in the container. So if you have 10 applications running, so just say Komodo firewall, and then we did Komodo dragon and Google Chrome. As soon as you click on this reset container button, it will actually clear the container and your container will be emptied and there will be no more processes running virtually. On the view active processes button here, this is actually just like a task manager um, and it actually shows you all the applications that are running on your computer. So if we go down through, we can see here's Komodo Internet Security. There are restrictions that can be set up. So if you did block this or, or um, marked it as untrusted or something like that, it would actually show in here. So there are no restrictions on any of the applications that are currently running as they are all trusted applications. Now, if I would run a um, application that I am not sure about, it would show, or if Komodo is not sure about, I should say, it would show over here untrusted or unknown. So it will give you that information as you run processes. On the right side here, open shared space, watch activity and run virtual desktop. So open shared space, open the storage space shared between virtual and real applications. So here you can actually put um, 
files and folders in this specific program data folder uh, of shared space that was created by Komodo. And you can actually share between virtual desktops and those contained applications so they have access to this folder um, if you would want to share something. So just say you had a config you wanted to open an application that was contained, you can put it in that folder and it will actually act as a shared um, network drive there. Uh, watch activity, so if you click on this, it will actually, once again, try to install Komodo Kill Switch, which we're not going to do that, and then run Virtual Desktop. If we click on this, it will actually go ahead and open up Komodo Virtual Desktop and create a virtual desktop for us to use, which would be more of a sandbox feature. Um, so you can see it's uh, Komodo's virtual desktop that they have designed. So pretty much this is everything that you can access in here. Um, and this would be a contained sandbox feature as well. So go back, you would click on close virtual desktop or switch to Windows view. So we're gonna go ahead and click the X and go back into our regular desktop here. And the last um, tab up here at the top is advanced task. You can create a rescue disk, open task manager, view logs. So creating a rescue disk will create a bootable CD or flash drive to clean up heavily infected PCs. Open the task manager. Um, we'll just open the task manager of um, Komodo shows all the tasks that are running. Um, let's see, actually that's running security tasks. So if there's a scan running or if there's some kind of uh, sandbox feature or something's running in the sandbox, it would show you there as well. View logs, this is all the logs on the actual application. Clean endpoint, run Komodo cleaning essentials, tool to clean up persistent infections. View quarantine, shows all the threats that are in the quarantine. And here you can actually submit files to Komodo for analysis if you would wish to do that. So um, now we're gonna go back to the home screen and there's now a settings button up here at the top as well. There's also a live support button. And then there's an advanced view button. If you click on advanced view, it actually shows um, pretty much everything in a more in-depth view. So if we go back to basic, basic view, you can see there's manage networks, unblock applications, update, run virtual. So those are more of a basic, um, this is more of a basic interface if you wish to do that. Uh, so we'll go back to advanced view just to see what is all on here. So here it actually shows you your firewall, uh, what mode it's running in. So currently by default, it's on safe mode. Um, it shows you your inbound and outbound connections. Currently there's one outbound connection, which is stating that it is the system. Um, so if you click on the system, it will actually show you here um, in that view connections option that we were in earlier, it will actually show you here what's going on with that certain connection. Network intrusions, if you click on that, it will show you everything that's been going on. Um, so you can see that these are all blocked. Um, these are all Komodo tasks, so I'm not really sure why they're blocked, uh, but they are automatically blocked for some reason. Um, and it shows you that here. And then blocked applications, it's showing here that Komodo Firewall was blocked and also Komodo Internet Security Essentials uh, was blocked as well. So those were two. Um, we can actually click on these and click unblock uh, and we'll unblock for all uh, security items. So it will remove those two from being blocked. Um, on the right side here, you will see that there is auto containment, HIPS, the virus scope, website filtering. So auto containment is the, um, this will get into settings, so we'll do that here in a second. That's the actual um, auto containment feature that if you right click on something, you can run the Komodo container. And that is actually set up to automatically run applications um, in a controlled environment in the sandbox feature if you wish to do that. It's disabled, so we can enable that in the future if we wish. HIPS um, is set as safe mode as well. Virus scope um, option enables virus scope subsystem, which dynamically analyzes the behavior of running processes and keeps a record of their activity. So this is more of a logging system or logging software that automatically updates as the program does different things. It will learn that program and its um, features and what it has to do. Uh, website filtering is also enabled, and that is just filtering of websites. Um, contain apps right now, or there are zero because we don't have anything running. And then unrecognized app or files are one, and it's showing here system32.exe. This was something that I use for activating Windows, so that is nothing to be concerned about. Um, now, if we go into uh, the top again, there's logs. If we click on logs, we can filter. It'll show all the um, containment events, virus scopes, firewall, HIPS, antivirus, 
It'll give you basically a summary of everything. We can open a log file and you can actually click on here and view a specific um, log if you wish to do that. Um, so that's what the logs button does there. Um, and then up here at the top is the settings. So that's what we're going to get into now. The user interface, you have the ability to change your theme. If you wish to change your theme around, you can do that. Language, you would select your language from here. Um, show messages from Komodo Message Center, show notification messages, show welcome message on startup, welcome screen on startup, show desktop agent or widget, sorry, um, show information messages when tasks are minimized and sent to background, play sound when alert is shown, and show the upgrade button on the main window. You're going to enable a password protection, which will um, prevent people from changing the settings in this actual application itself, if you wish to do that and lock it down. Updates, um, everything's set to default here. Check for updates um, every day. So every one day, it will check for updates. Automatically download program updates um, by default. Automatically install program updates in critical situations. System restart may be required and check for database updates every six hours. So it will check for a database update every six hours uh, automatically. Um, and then the options below, do not check for updates if, uh, if I am using these connections. So you can actually set up a um, override, I guess you can say, to avoid it from, if I'm using the local area connection, it will not download those updates. Do not check for updates if I am running on battery and use full signature da uh, database. You can set those up as well. Proxy and host, if you have a proxy, you can set that up from here. You can actually go in here and add a host port and authentication if you wish to do that as well. Logging, uh, the logging settings are as shown. Write to the local log database in the Komodo format. You can out also click on this to write to Windows event log if you wish to do that. Uh, when the log file reaches 20 megabytes, it will keep on updating and removing the oldest records. Um, or you can have them move to a specific folder. If you click on this, it will actually ask you which folder you wish to have that set up as. So you can actually click a specific folder. Uh, send anonymous program usage uh, statistics to Komodo. When this is enabled, crashes, errors, clicks. I actually unchecked that on the start uh, of the installation, so I'm not sure why it's checked. So I'm going to go ahead and click uncheck there, and we will not be sending any anonymous data there. Configuration. Um, this is the basic configuration. So as you can um, see here, you can actually change. Um, so it's showing that internet security is um, not active. Only thing is firewall security. That's because this is what we installed. So the proactive security, if you click activate, it, I'm pretty sure this is their um, paid edition. And then the internet security is the free edition. So if you click on activate, I'm sure it would want to download that um, configuration as well. Uh, this section lets you import, export, and switch configurations. So it's not letting me uh, view any of these configurations. So that's what I would guess that it would be. Um, firewall settings. So now this is where we get into the firewall settings itself. So enable firewall recommended. Um, you can click on either block all, custom rule set, safe mode, training mode. I'm going to leave it on safe mode as what I recommend. And that is a default setting, so we are not changing that one. Alert settings do not show pop-up alerts. Um, so you can actually click on this if you don't wish to see pop-ups. You can allow requests or block requests. I will be fine with the pop-ups, so I'm going to leave that unchecked. Enable Trust Connect Alerts. Um, so here you can actually set this to public and unsecured networks only, or secure unsecured wireless networks, sorry, and then unsecured wireless networks only. So it's by default set up as unsecured wireless networks only. Um, that's fine. You can change it to public and unsecured wireless networks if you wish. That will just show it whenever you are on a public and unsecured Wi-Fi network. Um, turn on traffic animation effects uh, turn traffic animation effects on that was a default setting so we'll leave that checked as well you can actually create roles for safe applications so if you click on that um, applications that are safe will actually create a role for that to allow them in the future or to block them in the future so whatever you set that up as um, I'm not going to check that as it's not um, needed but if you wish to do that you can and it will ask you in the future 
uh, what roles, or it will not actually in the feature what roles, it will automatically save those. Set alert frequency level, you can change this to very high, high, medium, low, very low. Um, by default, it's not checked, so this is just how many alerts you get um, and how frequently you get them. Uh, set new on-screen alert timeout to, that's not checked by default, so I'm going to leave that unchecked. Um, advanced, so you can actually set it up to filter IPv6 traffic. If you are using IPv6, you can go ahead and check this, and it will filter that traffic for you. Filter loopback traffic, that is checked by default. We're going to leave that checked as well. Block fragmented IP traffic, if you wish to click on that, it will um, block fragmented IPs, of course. Um, do not or do protocol analysis you can actually do this if you click on this it will do a protocol analysis so I'm going to go ahead and click on that and make sure that is checked enable anti ARP spoofing I'm going to go and check on that as well so that um, the ARP table will not be spoofed by a threat or virus uh, the application roles this is where you can actually go in here and set up uh, application roles so we can go in here and set up a new role set or role feature um, so if we use, you can actually copy from role set and this will allow, uh, you can set these by each individual application. Uh, so if you go ahead and click on files, you can browse through your application you're wishing to modify. You can select the application and use a custom role set or use the default role set web browser, email client, FTP allowed, blocked, or outgoing only. So you would just click on web browser, for example, and if you wanted to set this up for Google Chrome, you can go ahead and change these settings if you wish by using a custom rule set. The um, use rule set by default are automatically set for you. You cannot change those. You would have to click use custom rule set, copy from rule set and web browser, and then you can modify here what you wish to do. So for example, the web filter or the web browser one, allow access to loopback zone, allow outgoing HTTP request, allow outgoing FTP request, allow outgoing FTP PASV request, allow outgoing DNS request, block all block and log all unmatching request. So you can set those up if you wish for each individual application. Um, and every time an application is allowed or blocked permanently, it will appear in here so you can modify those application rules if you wish to. Global rules. Um, this is the global rules that are set up. Um, none of these are checked, but you can actually go in here and check these. Allow all outgoing requests if the target is in home one. Allow all incoming requests if the sender is in home one. So you can set those up if you wish. Um, you can set up blocking the ICMP v4 um, from Mac. Any of these um, settings here you can actually check. And uh, you can actually allow this is basically creating a global firewall rule. So you can allow or block um, TCP or UDP, ICMP or specific IP. Um, you can set the direction in or out. And then you can set up a um, description here. And then you can select the source address. Um, you can actually click on address range and give an address range. Destination address, you can set up in a specific destination, specific port. And destination port. Uh, this was source port and this is destination. You can also click on log as a firewall event if this rule is fired. So you can click on that and it will show that rule um, logged in the logs as well. These are the rule sets that you can actually um, go in here and modify. So this is the default for web browser. If you wish to modify these, you can go in here and actually click on these and click uh, OK and it will save those to. Um, a new rule set. So if you do go ahead and create a new application rule set, um, you can actually do that from here as well. If you click on add, you can copy it from another rule set and then you can modify or um, remove different things. So this is all just built into the application um, and this these are used as default um, rule sets for you to set them up easier in the future for other applications. Network zones uh, enable automatic detection of private networks. Do not pop up, do not show pop-up alerts and treat location as home. So that is set as default. And if you're on a work network or public network, you can set that up as well. Um, here's your networking zones. So this is my home one. This is where I'm at now. And there's also a loopback zone, which is the 127.0.0.1.
uh, that's your loopback address. Um, and then you can also set up a blocked zone if you wish to do that. You can set up a blocked zone for um, loopback zone or home one, or you can add a new blocked address, and that would be a specific um, address that you're putting in there. Port sets, um, you can see here the port sets that are defined on this computer. HTTP ports, 80443 is HTTPS, and 8080 is also an HTTP uh, port. POP3, SMTP, these are email ports, uh, and then privilege ports. So by default, these are all set up already. So N0 through 123. You can add a new port set if you wish. Uh, you just name it here, click on add, and you can either add a single port, you can show or add a port range from just say 20 to 25, and then you can also um, click on any, and that would be any ports uh, within the scope. You can also exclude not the choice below, so you can exclude this as well. Um, On to hips here, hip settings. Uh, it's by default set up as safe mode. If you click on monitoring settings, these are all the things that are monitored. Um, so inter process memory access, Windows win event hooks, device driver installations, process terminations, process execution, Windows messages, DNS, RPC, client service, protected COM interfaces, protected files and folders, protected registry keys, physical memory, computer monitor, disk, keyboard. Um, by default, these are all set up with the exception of computer monitor and keyboard. Um, so you can actually set up objects to monitor against direct access. I would probably access or uh, select the keyboard uh, because if there is a keylogger that is running, um, that is how your information is gained within a keylogger. So I would click on the key, uh, keyboard as well to set that up. And you can set this up either with paranoid mode, safe mode, or training mode. Uh, as I said, safe mode would probably be the best bet, and that's what I would recommend. You can click here to do not show pop-up alerts, and you can um, allow request or block request. Set pop-up alerts to verbose mode. Uh, create roles for safe applications. Set new on-screen alert timeout to 120 seconds. Um, enable adaptive mode under low system resources. Block all unknown applications when the application is not running. So here's where you can set up your HIPS roles. Um, you can actually click on add and add a new role. Um, so for example, we can set up any of these. So um, you can actually click on each of these individually. Um, if you would go ahead and click on allowed application, um, it will set all these as access rights to allow. If you set them up as so if we block or contain application, it will actually block all these. So you can go in here and set up individual roles for each of your applications if you wish. Um, role sets, this is a, basically the same thing. You can modify your role sets here for HIPS, um, as same as the firewall, protected objects. Um, these are the startup folders that are protected. These are important files and folders. You can actually add in here um, important files and folders such as your documents, pictures, and um, desktop so that those files are never blocked or um, messed with, I guess you can say. Blocked files, you can add those in here. Here's your registry keys that are protected. Um, you can see here there's a good list of them. You can add any of those anywhere in here that you wish. Protected data, COM interfaces, etc. HIPS groups, um, here you can set up automatic startup. These are um, this is all the keys that are used for automatic startup. Um, Komodo keys, Internet Explorer keys, important keys, temporary keys. So if you go down through, you can see all these are listed as important keys. So you can actually go in there and edit them or modify them or add new ones, um, add new registry keys or add new groups. Uh, that's totally up to you. I'm leaving everything as default. Containment settings. Uh, shared spaces are the locations that contained applications and other applications share. So um, for example, reading or writing to these locations are not virtualized. So you can do not virtualize access to the specific file and folder. And basically the shared space is the only one that's allowed. Um, that's the only exclusion there. So you can set up more if you wish to provide more folders to uh, containment features. If you contain an application and want a different folder that is allowed to have access to that 
self-contained application, you can set that up from here as uh, the specific or specified files and folders. Do not virtualize access to the uh, specified registry keys and values. If you set up this, uh, this will actually provide exclusions to registry keys on your computer that will have access to that virtual application as well. Enable automatic startup for services installed in this container. Uh, that's fine. Show highlight frame for contained applications. Detect programs which require elevated privileges, installers, or updates. Uh, that's fine as well. Do not show privilege alerts, uh, elevation alerts. Um, you can click on this and then it would actually, you can set up a default by run unlimited, run unlimited and trust, block, run inside the container. I would leave this unchecked because as I said, I always like to see my pop-ups if something is going on. It will let you know that. Allow contain application access to the clipboard. I would not have this selected as you don't want the contained applications to have access to your clipboard if there is something critical on there. And you can also protect virtual desktop with a password if you wish to do that as well. Auto containment feature, this is not enabled by default. Um, if you wanted to enable this, that would be fine. However, I like to see the pop-ups and actually select myself if an application should be uh, contained or not. So this is where you would set up all the rules for auto containment if you wish to do that. And you can set up block for all applications. You can set up run virtually for all applications unrecognized. Um, so there's a lot of settings in here you can do. You can actually click on um, criteria and you could set up all these different settings, file age, file rating, origin, etc. So you can do some pretty uh, in-depth configuration there as well. File rating, um, enable cloud lookup. This is enabled by default and I recommend keeping it checked. Analyze unknown files in the cloud by uploading them for instant analysis. Upload metadata or metadata of unknown files to the cloud. Do not show pop-up alerts. So this happens automatically. You don't need to have a pop-up for that. Um, so you can go ahead and leave that unchecked or leave that checked as well. Rate applications according to their vendor rating. Trust files and installed by trusted installers, detect potentially unwanted applications. All these are fine and can remain checked. Here's all of your file groups. So you can actually go in here and set up um, individual file groups of extensions. And um, as you can see here, executables. These are all the executable um, file types that you can go down through and modify. All applications, you can see here that this is everything. Um, important files and folders. This is the same thing that we were in earlier. It shows all these um, important files and folders. So you can actually click on add, you can add a file, and you can actually go in there and add an individual file to each of these if you wish. File list, um, you can see that these are all the files that are on the computer currently. Uh, you can actually go in here and um, modify those if you wish. And this basically gives you access to show you if they're trusted or uh, malicious or unrecognized. You can change the ratings if you wish. Um, so for example, this program here is untrusted or unrecognized. And that is the one that I use for my activation on Windows. So it is fine. So how I wanted to, I can actually go in here and click on trusted. And it will mark that as a trusted application now that I mark that uh, myself. Submitted files. This is all the files that are uploaded to the Komodo um, file rating so anything that is in here it will show you the results and it will show you uh, pretty much everything about it if it is a um, if it is a malicious uh, item you can actually click clean and it will try to clean that item uh, and then vendor list this shows all the vendors that are out there from the komodo database and there's a very long list of different um, vendors out there so this is all these are all rated by Komodo. So as you can see, these are all trusted vendors. Um, you can actually click on lookup. So if you click on one of these and click lookup, it will show you the trusted um, vendor there. You can click on vendor details and you can see the vendor rating from Komodo and the user rating. You can actually click on rate now if you wish, and you can set a rating for that individual um, company there. Advanced protection. So if we go into virus scope, this option enables virus scope subsystem, which dynamically analyzes the behavior of running processes. I would recommend keeping this checked. As I said, it does go through and scan and learns the application itself. So I would keep that checked. Do not show pop-up alerts. Um, I would leave that unchecked. 
monitor only the applications in the container. So you can actually set this virus scope to only monitor those applications that run in the container or run virtually or restricted. Um, that's probably good to have set up there. You can, if you wanted everything monitored, you can uncheck this and it would uh, then monitor all your items. Uh, scan exclusion, so it's gonna not scan the recycling bin. It's not gonna scan the Komodo internet security folder and excluded applications, the search indexer, and you can also set up the excluded certificate authorities if you wish to do that as well. Device control, you can enable device control here. Log detected devices, show notification when devices are being disabled or enabled, and you can see here that there, um, you can actually add individual devices such as a CD drive, tape drive, printing drive. Um, you can do pretty much all that there. Um, so exclusions, like we just went through that, we will go ahead and get into uh, script analysis here in just a second. All right, sorry about that. So the script analysis, um, it is set as default um, enabled, perform script analysis, which is recommended. We're gonna go ahead and leave this on so it will actually analyze, uh, analyze scripts that are ran on the computer. And you can see here that these are the um, heuristic command line analysis that are set up. And in addition, embedded code detection as well. Um, you can set up an auto run scan. So th those are the default settings and I would leave those as default as well. Miscellaneous don't detect shell code injections in these applications. So you can set up an exclusion um, to not detect shell code injections in these specific applications. Um, by default, nothing is enabled, of course, and I wouldn't recommend setting any applications to um, any kind of exceptions there. Show alerts in case uh, any other software attempts to modify current settings or installed browsers. I will leave that by default checked. Do not automatically clean up suspicious certificates. That is fine. Uh, apply the selected uh, action to unrecognize auto run entries related to new and modified registry items you can ignore. Um, when this option is enabled, the registry will be monitored and for modifications and the selected action will be applied to detected unrecognized Windows services, auto start entries, or scheduled task. So by default, this is set as ignore, and that is fine as well. You can set it up to terminate, terminate and disable, or quarantine and disable as well. Uh, website filtering, so it will automatically filter allowed sites and blocked sites. If you go in here and modify, you can actually sell, uh, select here which categories are set up as blocked. So block sites, I would set as uh, malware sites, phishing sites, suspicious sites, malicious sites, potentially unwanted applications, and um, restrictions you can set up uh, for specific users. If there are multiple users on this computer, you can set that up. Uh, so permissions, it's going to allow, ask, or block. We're gonna leave it as ask, and you can turn on logging as well if you wish to do that. And we're gonna go ahead and click OK. And the allowed sites here, you can actually click on modified. And by default, um, safe sites and exclusions are set up. So you can go ahead and click on those two. And you can click on allow for everyone and click OK, and that will allow for all safe sites. Um, categories, you can also set up exclusions if you wish to add an exclusion in here. Um, so if we click on add a website, just say google.com, click OK, and it will actually set up an exclusion in Google, or it will be, uh, Google will be the exclusion there. Uh, to remove an exclusion, you click on it, click remove, and that's pretty much it there. Um, so you can set up multiple exclusions there if you know of a website that is safe and you don't want it to be monitored while you're on that website. And then to save settings, you just click on the OK button and everything is saved. Um, so with that being said, that's pretty much the overview of the configuration that I would personally set up for Komodo Firewall. Uh, if you guys have any questions, you can comment below. Also, uh, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And I appreciate you taking the time to watch my video, and I hope this helped you out some. And uh, with that being said, we will see you guys on the next one. And thanks a lot for watching.